Hey there, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the live stream. So glad to have you back on for episode number 16. As you know, you can say hello, so please, wherever you are watching from, drop a note in the comments, say hello. Lola, Lola, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Probably always one of the first. I just saw that you posted on Instagram uh, the photo or the photo, the painting you were doing um, of the dog. Is that your dog? Um, the it looks like maybe a black lab. Really good. I need to go back and look at it. I just uh, saw it in my stream right before uh, I started the live stream, so I need to go back and look at it. Super impressive. Well done. Well done. So everybody say hello uh, as you come into the room. So glad to have you. Excited for today's painting. Excited to get started. I hope you had a great week. Um, a little bit of a crazy week, of course, here in the U.S., but this is a safe zone. We're just going to unwind tonight and relax a little bit with some painting. Um, I did some more work. Uh, let me... On the idea that I had uh, started... His name is Tank. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so um, a few weeks ago, I had painted a picture of some piano keys. And I think I showed you the first one, and I've posted on Instagram. But I wanted to show another one I did. Maybe I showed this last week. Can't remember. Um, really bright different colors that obviously aren't the normal colors of piano keys. Here's another one I did this week. Um, I need to go back and clean this up. It's not quite right. The perspective isn't quite right, but it was a lot of fun. Um, so that's what I've been working on this week and um, something different that I don't normally do, but is is definitely a learning experience and a lot of fun. Thanks for the memory. That's really cute. I love it. I love it. What a great way to memorialize the uh, the stu or your uh, pup. So, oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that you were able to to do that. It, it uh, I can't wait to go back and look at it. Hey there, Paul. So glad, or Paul John. So glad to have you. Thanks for stopping in. So my live stream is basically just uh, a kind of open house. People pop in and pop out. We chat. I paint. And um, I started about six months ago teaching myself to paint um, using only YouTube uh, videos and tutorials. So that's kind of the game. Um, and we have a lot of fun. So uh, welcome. Ah, so glad to have you as a first time viewer. I usually paint for about two hours, so it's a quite a uh, long um, live stream, so you're welcome to pop in and out. Um, definitely, if you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. I This week, actually, I am starting to produce short form content as well, um, kind of chronicling this process of learning to paint, but applying it specifically to the application of creativity and innovation in our lives and careers. Um, during my real job, I am a, a teacher and an educator, and so I'm always looking for, uh, as a creative, how do I apply what I'm learning to the real world? And especially in this process of learning to paint, um, it's been really interesting to see progress fairly quickly, and so I'm kind of dissecting that and breaking that apart, um, and so I'm going to be producing some short-form videos on that as well. So anyway, ooh, excellent. I have not yet dived into oil. I, I had acrylics when I started. I had a, a box of them in my house. And so I just um, really was out of kind of desperation for something to um, a creative outlet to kind of really for mental health, just to kind of have something unwind. And I had acrylics. And so I started working with acrylics. Um, and so I eventually will dive into oils. But I uh, want to learn a little bit more about the fundamentals, really learn what I'm doing a little better, um, and then dive into oils because uh, I know the, the way the, those medium are used are totally different in the sense of um, how you um, use them as far as oils drying more slowly and, and the acrylics drying quickly. So yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, 
Hey there, Joe. I saw you in Max's comments. Thanks so much for popping in. I was just kind of kind of chatting about what I do. Um, I started learning, uh, teaching myself to paint uh, using YouTube tutorials and YouTube videos in the last six months. And so that's kind of the process. Every Saturday night I hang out with uh, people and we just chat and I paint. So that's kind of what we're doing. So glad to have you pop in and say hello. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks. It's a uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I can, well, maybe I can, let me pull my phone down and, yeah, it's just a, a regular paint smock, kind of keeps the paint off of me, um, so really cheap, I think, on Amazon, you can grab one, so, uh, but it's, it's just canvas kind of denim material and is a great, a great investment, because definitely got paint, I, I happen, I tend to drop, um, paint brushes when I'm painting, so that's the deal. All right, so let's get started, y'all. Um, let me adjust the camera a little bit. I'm going to pull you over my shoulder like we do. Um, let me pull up the reference photo for you. You are so right, Joe. I, yeah, I started painting and was following a tutorial and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing I've ever done. Um, or not following a tutorial, sorry. I was trying to um, trying to copy a, a photo. And I was like, this is terrible. It was so bad, so bad, so bad. Because I only had like two or three colors. Um, I knew nothing about color theory. I knew nothing about perspective. I knew nothing about anything. Um, I've never drawn or painted really in my life. Um, I think I painted once kind of a Bob Ross type painting when I was like 10 years old or something. Um, but yeah, that's been the process. So uh, YouTube is definitely a lot of fun. And now that I get to hang out with all of y'all on YouTube, this is, it's great as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see in your right hand corner kind of what we're working on. Um, and let me adjust this better. Oops, that's not gonna work. Okay, let's do that. Um, so you can see the in the right hand corner the image or the photo. My friend Bob took this right here on the Arkansas River where I live. And so we're gonna work on this a little bit tonight and see what we can get done. Um, my intent is to practice water. Water for me is a challenge, and so that's kind of one of the reasons that I chose this, as well as painting these uh, shadows and light, the difference in the shadows of light, and really the value um, changes. We talked last um, last time about the value changes, and so um, that's kind of what I'm working on from my own experience. Hey, Kimberly, I'll dip in and say hi. So glad to have you. I'm Steve, and uh, I started learning to paint uh, about six months ago, and so this is just my live stream where I hang out with friends and we chat, and and they watch me paint, and I learn basically in front of everybody. So, um, but yeah, tonight my main intention is to practice the to get the shadows and the values correct. You you can see over here on my on my left side. I have the reference photo and then a black and white version. Um, this is just because I want to be able to look at this black and white version and really look and see if my values are, um, or where I'm getting the values off, hopefully. Um, I'm trying to intentionally train my eyes to recognize value more than, or as much as color. Um, and so that's the intention and that's what's going on in my head. So, all right, let's get us started with laying in. Um, awesome. Do you use acrylics or oils, or what do you uh, what do you usually do, uh, Kimberly? Uh, what medium do you usually paint on? This is something I am just building up this live stream, but eventually I would love to be able to. Um, maybe what I'll do. Maybe this week I'll put up a. A list on my website so people can give me their email address and I can send out reference photos. Um, oh, perfect! I'm using acrylics as well. Um, I I might uh, if I can get because I would love to paint along with you know paint with 
people. I did one live stream where I had a guest artist join me and we painted together um, from the same reference photo or the same reference. Um, and so that was a lot of fun um, before the holidays. But I'd like to get where as I build, um, you know, people watching, um, those who are artists also, I'd love to have people painting along with me. That would just even make it more fun because I crowdsource ideas because again, I'm learning. And so I often will ask, ask the audience when I get stuck. So, all right, let's jump in. I'm going to first start with laying in again, some of these values, um, yeah, I have not tackled oils yet because of that. Um, probably when I do, I will use a, fat, a quick dry medium to help them dry more quickly um, because I'm used to painting relatively fast. I do notice obviously that with acrylics, you, you also have challenges with, um, with um, uh, blending. Yeah, they dry so quick that uh, they're difficult to blend, but you know, it's all par for the course. So let us try, I'm gonna do some blue. Cerulean might be too bright, but we're gonna see. And we'll lay in the, uh, block in some of these colors and then we'll go and see what we can do for, um, see what we can do Once we have some of this color blocked in, we'll put in some detail. And then I'll probably have to continue working with some detail into the week because I think this one's gonna take a little longer than my skill level. It's gonna take me a little longer than two hours with my skill level. So that's one thing I've learned along this trail Hey there, whatever. Um, someone's with nearly no exposure to creating graphic art, starting with drawing is normal. I honestly don't know. Um, does anybody on the stream have um, a traditional education as far as uh, graphic graphic art? I, I think generally people, you learn the basics like perspective and, and, um, and value and color theory and all of those things. Um, that would be my guess. That, that that's why people start with drawing. Um, yeah, I just happen to draw, I just happen to start with acrylic painting because that's what I had in my house. And uh, so yeah, that's, that's my story. But uh, are you an artist? I don't wanna call you tomato or whatever tomato. <laughs> Thanks for joining from Twitch. What do you stream on Twitch uh, or what? Or do you do are you gamer what do you game what do you play or what's your what's your poison oh that's good Kimberly yeah that's I think that's important um, I, I know some artists paint with acrylics to lay in the base and then they go back with oils um, seal it and go back with oils to add detail um, and that may be that may end up where I where I get to as I develop my own skill. We shall see. Don't know. Okay. Continuing fine art student. Oh, okay, cool. So question um, that Tomato had with no, nearly no exposure to creating graphic art um, is starting with drawing normal. Maybe you can answer that. What is an artist? Awesome. A lot of Minecraft, some language studies. I have not got into Minecraft because I'm afraid if I got into it, I would end up doing nothing else in my life. <laughs> I would be too drawn in. Okay. Let's see if we can get some of this color. I'm having so much fun chatting with y'all. I got to get to painting. Um, but for what I've seen, a lot of college graphic design programs incorporate a lot of painting in art classes. Yeah. 
I I think it it probably depends on the school too, right? Like what is like what is their focus? What is their the expertise of the school and how do they what's the philosophy of the school um, that you attend? Yep, yeah, that's a good point, good point. Ooh, good tip, Joe. Good tip. Uh, so the tags. Oh, yeah. Like when you create the stream, I need to do that because I've set. Um, so those of you watching on YouTube or if you subscribe on YouTube, I have set the next, I think actually through April, the live stream. So if you want to set reminders for those, if you are interested in stopping in periodically, um, or each weekend, you can do that on YouTube now. You should be able to, it's just episode 17, 18, 19, um, every weekend from now till, um, I think April or maybe even May. I did like 20 or 30. I just went and created them. So, um, but yeah, Joe, I will go back and put some, that's some really, that's really great advice. Thank you. Thank you. I will put some tags in. And as people watch, hopefully, and then that's my intention, creating some short form content as well. As more and more people watch, um, hopefully it'll, the algorithms will do nice things for me. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Good suggestion. I did not do that and should have. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely trains. That's my goal. Like, um, and I, I had told everybody that you know, when we started the live stream, my goal is to basically just learn different things. I started with landscape because that was what was naturally easiest for me to pick up. Um, but I do want to do more, um, some additional kind of photo realism work and do some still life. I want to do some Eventually, I want to get where I can do plain air uh, painting. I, that's going to be more challenging for me. Um, I think it is for every artist, but I think it will be fun. Um, and I, I want to develop my skill and capacity. Uh, eventually, I want to do um, abstract and just kind of develop my, my skill as I go, trying different things. And my, my belief is that as I, as I try different things, naturally there will just be some things I do better or like better and uh, we'll be able to, I'll kind of find my voice or my style or my thing, the, you know, the medium I prefer, the, the methods that work best for me, that kind of thing. That's the intent. All right, so we have some rough sky and I painted it further down than we're gonna need. Um, sometimes YouTube likes to randomly delete them and you can just copy and paste them back in. Ooh, amazing tip, thanks. Yeah, I will do that, like just in a Google Doc or something that way, yeah. Especially because my streams are, especially in the streams, because the streams are all pretty much the same content. Um, but my my background my is in communications, and I teach entrepreneurship um, in high school. I'm a high school teacher, so um, the short form content I want to do is really about applying creativity in a practical way to life and business, and so. Um, all right, when I look at, so over here, when I look at the value, this shows up kind of bluish on your screen, I think, but it's black and white. My values here are a little less, um, this is the brightest value up here, um, but I want to put in, because it's the same color, so I want to put in some of this down here, but it is shadowed a little bit, so I'm going to bring in a little ultramarine blue and with the cerulean blue and saturate it just a little bit more because the values are it is in shadow 
and it is um it is a little not i hate to say darker but the the value is a little yeah a little darker i guess um so we're gonna put that put kind of block that in a little bit up here we'll just bring it all the way up again just blocking in the main values is the intent let's see let's bring this because our dark values will be down here and they'll cover this up so we can bring the color all the way down I know this is wonky and sideways on your screen, but uh, just put in, just want to get the canvas covered here. So pardon me for a minute and we'll get it set. Just soft, soften these edges a little bit, blend them out. Okay, now, so we have that. Basically, I'm going to try to pull y'all a little bit more over this way. You'll see my, well, you're just going to see my computer. Um, well, kind of, I don't know. I need to work on my setup here, but okay. You're looking mostly over my shoulder so you can kind of see what's going on. I love that. I went to a school called the Entrepreneurship Academy my senior year of high school, which is how I next met Max. Wish we could have had a greater focus on arts and creativity. Yeah, I teach at a school. Um, I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I teach at a school called the Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts. Um, we're a public high school, but we are focused, of course, in sciences and uh, the humanities. Um, and so, uh, yeah, my capstone or my class is a capstone class that is uh, focused on innovation, creativity, etc. cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's put in some additional it's okay next week we will do your ceiling <laughs> nice nice okay yeah max is a good guy joe he is uh i met him just through linkedin and then I was at a conference a few years ago at, in Pittsburgh, and he was still in college at Carnegie Mellon. And um, I went across town, and we met for like just 30 minutes, but then developed a friendship, and um, so it's kind of cool. Okay, so now what I want to do, I think, is put in the the place of these the values of these uh, darker shades. Um, and then the mass of the of the um, kind of cliff, the bluffs. This is coming down the Arkansas River before you get to the the Little Rock, um, it, which doesn't really exist anymore. But there's a there's a plaque there that says this is where the French explorers or trappers stopped and. So let's do, let's go, um, I think I want to just kind of block in some of this color and let me do a, I think I want to do kind of a brown as a base color, taking some ochre, yellow ochre, as we'll be able to put some 
highlights and such on top of this. So let's try to see if we can just put in some, and I'm just going to wing it, a wing living on a prayer, like Bon Jovi says, right? So we're going to just put this in here. We'll see how this goes. So I'm kind of looking at my I'm looking at my value reference as well as my actual reference photo kind of lay in this color this comes about halfway over the shadow does so we'll put that in there, just cover up this canvas a little bit. I'm going to bring in this. One tip I've learned, which the artists in the room will understand, but uh, I wish I could show. I um, So I'm mixing here. I'm using this ultramarine blue, the ochre, some of this um, burnt umber, and the white and kind of making this shadow color here. Um, one of the things that when you're mixing colors, if you kind of mix them as variations of each other, then as you are applying them to the canvas, especially in the phase where you're kind of blocking in, making sure you get your values correct, you end up having a lot more cohesion in your in your uh, painting and so that's what I'm going for right now is getting the paint on the canvas but also then making sure I have some cohesion as I go and my paint is drying almost on the palette faster than I can apply it so that's what's happening here but we'll get it done we'll get it done
it's funny because this weekend we had quite a few new people pop in and kind of um, Lola is here who's been kind of a standard bearer from the beginning um, but kind of some of the others that usually pop in aren't here so I'll have to see usually my folks pop in and I'll have to see what's the deal mom and dad what you doing abandoning me no probably got busy either got a snowstorm or my dad was cutting apart the Christmas tree to feed to the deer they live up in the mountains of uh, western South Dakota so out by Wyoming and he was the deer loved to come and eat the <laughs> the branches of the Christmas tree uh, so he was gonna leave those for them Yes, absolutely. You are you are correct. I'm laying in. I'm basically just blocking in the values to to make sure that I get kind of the general values that I want in the right place, and then and that the perspective. Right now, all I'm looking at is value, perspective, and composition. So yes, you're absolutely right. I'm just basically blocking in blocks of color, um, especially with acrylics trying to, um, because they dry so fast, trying to blend, make sure I don't have sharp, sharp edges. Um, yeah, it's basically trial and error, not trial and error, but um, laying in the values so that they're about in the right place. And then, yes, I'll go back over them. As this dries, then I'll be able to put other um, specific details in. Um, but if I get this correct, like if I do this well, then the, uh, the other is a lot easier. The detail work becomes a lot easier. And honestly, that's why I believe that I've been able to, in really six months, become a fairly okay artist. Um, I mean, I can paint things that look like what they're supposed to look like um, because, yes, general color, general light, and basic shapes, yes. Um, general light is what you're referring to is what I, when I say values, that's what I'm talking about. Like, like right now you can start to see, okay, that's where kind of our, um, this is kind of where our highlights are going to, or our sunlight is going to live. This is where our shadows are going to be. So yes, you're correct. And I made a mistake here. So we're going to make this kind of mountain area a little bit higher than maybe it is in the reference. So I kind of dabbed up into the sky a little high. So we're just going to do that and make it better. Make it better. I just hear beetles in my head. Then I'm going to take this, a little bit of this color, and I'm going to be, hey there, Bob G. So glad to have you. Thank you for stopping in. I was just telling everybody my, my regulars weren't here at the beginning of the, you are usually always here and my folks usually always stop in and great to have you. Okay. 
So I'm laying this in. Obviously, the reflection is not this, but it will give us something to build on. I'm just covering, trying to cover the a base of the canvas that is similar to what is the reflection. Okay. Let's see. Let's go here. Okay. So this kind of, there's this kind of light reflection kind of goes out here. There, there, comes back across here. Ah, Kimberly, good point. Yes, thank you. Yeah, a little bit color theory. Bob G, it actually does look familiar. At the beginning of the uh, stream, I said this is a photo my friend Bob took here on the Arkansas River. So y'all, this is my friend Bob. He is the amazing photographer who snapped this, I believe, just pulled over and saw a good sunset and took it with his phone, I think. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Bob G, for taking this beautiful photo and letting me paint it. I appreciate it. At the end, probably flex of that layer. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yes, you're correct. That is the intent. And that's, that's the tip, um, like when you're painting, um, especially like in landscapes, when you're painting foliage or really anything rocks or water even you you want that base and then you layer on top of it and so then it looks like sky showing through or there's shadows under the trees and that's what can help it look um a little more realistic so yes you're absolutely right this will and you'll see that my palette's just kind of a mess in here of when I bring in the blue, so the blue and yellow are obviously complementary. Um, I don't know if they're actually complementary on the on the wheel, um, the color wheel, but they complement each other. And so the blue actually will help give us kind of the shadow color of the yellow. When I bring that down in, you can see how it kind of grays it and brings in the without adding. If I add brown, then it's too red. Um, Hibiscus tea with pomegranate pearls while painting along. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. You are. You will have to um, post. I, I'll have to find you and follow you. Are you on Instagram or anything where I can see your version of this? I would love to. I would love that. That's really cool. Oh, this isn't quite dry yet, but we'll we'll make it work. Hibiscus tea. So, uh, Kimberly, if you are a, um, ha, yes, the color wheel. See, we need the the people that are that are the real pros. This is what's great about this type of thing. Y'all can fill me in and help me get uh, <laughs> do it right. Do it right. So um, if you're a tea drinker, you definitely have to check out uh, locally. A, a friend of mine started a tea house um, a few years ago, and she does her own blends. If you're kind of a, a tea connoisseur and uh, 
she is a small business, but I always promote my friends who are small business owners. And it's Abby's Teas in Little Rock, Arkansas. Abby's Teas and Things. Um, I think she's on Instagram at Abby's Teas or Abby's Teas and Things. Should be easy to find. Um, but she has a hibiscus blend that's really popular um, from what I understand. She's also got a cherry fig that's amazing. She does seasonal blends. So um, if you like different teas with different seasons, it's a, she's a, and she ships all across the country if you're in the U.S. So yeah, it's, I, that's the thing, like any rule, it's, uh, it's, mostly a recommendation you learn the rules so that you know when to break it right that's my opinion at least learn the rule and then you can break it okay i need to okay i'm just kind of trying to come in here and again we have just the basic Basic colors, um, okay. What I need to do is actually darken this a little bit. What I'm noticing when I look at my value reference, there are actually darker some darker values that I'm not. Oops. There, see that orange that just got on my, that's why I have to have this uh, apron on. And I also have an old t-shirt on my lap so that I can wipe off paint because I do crazy things like that. So I want to go back in and kind of come in here again. with my a little bit of a touch up some of these values because we want to retain our most saturated colors normally it would be the most saturated colors are closest to the viewer but in this case, we're wanting to draw the viewer's eyes across the river to that um, bluff. And so we really want to get the light right there. That's what we're, that's what we're working for. Okay. There, I think the value is a little better there. Um, Same with music. Learn it all, then throw it away and make some jazz. Absolutely. Do you follow, um, if you like jazz, do you follow uh, Jacob Collier? I My degree in my undergrad was music, so I appreciate people who can, like him, that are kind of savants that can do amazing things with music. Can't hardly understand half the stuff he does, but it's amazing. Amazing to watch, especially his like a live stream or something that he does where he like just unpacks all this stuff and 
he did a live stream with Charlie Pluth that was they were just like geeking out over music theory and it was like really deep I was like oh my goodness this is so satisfying to my soul but I couldn't follow half of it I was like whoa it's really fun really fun okay let me zoom this just a bit again I'm spending a lot of times on um, impressionist style will be good for this piece yeah absolutely I do want to do there's a painter here in town um, actually used to be an uh, a football player at the university he was a well-known football player um, and then went and became an impressionist painter um, using he uses the same um, palette that uh, not Rembrandt uh, Van Gogh used and so really interesting um, really interesting guy and very talented and I want to do some impressionist painting eventually but I want to learn a little bit more because I think it's not easy to do impressionist but it's easy to do kind of faux impressionist um, because you haven't spent the time to actually learn how to you know do like photorealism or you know do more realistic painting and so I want to kind of play with that a little bit eventually but not quite yet but yeah you're right this would be a good especially as I'm kind of laying in this color I'm like oh this this would be really cool The, another tip that I've learned kind of as I'm learning the process of painting is as you learn to paint, it's, it's very, I guess the default is to paint, you know, to draw what you see. Um, but if you can train your eyes to kind of paint the Paint what you see, yes, but paint the the blocks of you know shadow and light, and all of a sudden the image emerges from those things, and it's like, oh, I wasn't even intentionally painting that, but I got the. That's why I'm spending so much time on these values here to kind of try to make sure that I get this correct. However, I think I need these coming a little further, maybe not, I think a little bit further down here. I think we need a little more into the water. So I added a little orange to my brown mix here. Um, I'm adding a little orange to begin to suggest in the reflection that, uh, that there's that uh, orange coming through. Let me put a little more, see what I can get.
now like what you were saying what um whoops i didn't mean to put that back up um you're absolutely right kimberly it's the reflection of the light it's the distortion of the water or whatever is reflected it's all of those things, isn't it? So I'm desaturating this a little bit, changing the values here um, to give me the kind of form of these reflections. So that's exactly what you were saying, what? Yep, it's exactly. Hey, Max. Ooh, interesting. Dealing with reflections. I, mean, I did one painting um, several months or a couple months ago that was uh, um, Colorado. It was my very first water one where it was a mountain scene in Colorado, but I have not attacked it since. So, yeah, that's this is exactly what I'm working on um, tonight is the reflections in water and getting my values correct in my in the painting so that's that's kind of what my my goal is tonight that's what i'm focused on hence i've been going an hour already and well not really because we had a great conversation several new people popped in so Absolutely, sir. I'm so glad you switched and asked that conversation. It just started like firing like all these resources. So yeah, the Thea Foundation, I've never worked with them, but they're well known here in, in Little Rock and they do great work. Um, they're I, not a smaller foundation, I would say, but they're, I mean, Little Rock's smaller. We're a small town, so um, it's um, kind of yeah, their work is known and they they do really great work in the arts with students. So I think, and then the Clinton Foundation obviously is a large foundation, but they do all kinds of education programs for students. Um, that's one of the pillars, especially locally, because obviously we have the Clinton Foundation in New York that um, does a lot of the, well, their office there in New York is, they do a lot of international work, but uh Clinton Foundation here is very active in the Little Rock community because the Presidential Center, they just do a lot of education programs for the, the community. So yeah, absolutely. Glad I could be of help. Kimberly, do you and Max know, do you know Max or did you come from Max's stream? <laughs> you woke your greyhounds and you can't paint. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that would be, I imagine that would be a challenge. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Well, yes, take care of the fur babies. Don't want them disturbed for sure. Fur babies must be, must take priority. It's great to have everybody join. It's, I enjoy painting, of course, but I enjoy having someone to converse with. So you all just made my night. I mentioned that I'm gonna start creating some short form content on YouTube. Um, that first video I'm hoping, I am not a video editor, so you will, you will see the very first, like the rough cut, Steve's uh, rough cut, but I'm putting out a video, hopefully Monday, 
if I can get it edited. I filmed it today. I'm going to get it edited hopefully tonight or tomorrow. Um, on creativity and innovation and goal setting for artists and creatives. And uh, it's going to be based on the 80-20 rule. If you have ever applied that rule or used that rule, I just finished reading that book. And so that video is going to chat about that principle specifically for artists and creatives. So if you are interested in that kind of content as well, make sure that you subscribe on YouTube because that's where it's going to come out. Um, yeah, so that's all I'll say about that. But make sure you're following if that's of interest. Oh, that's unfortunate. My brother has a, a pit and uh, he's a big pup. So I know, well, the little ones make some terrible, terrible sense as well, but I can imagine large dogs. Although greyhounds are fairly lithe and slender, but I imagine it's not a pleasant experience either way. They're like, Mom, we're just relaxing. That's awesome. Yeah, Max, I want to figure out a way, and I'm just testing this now, but I wanted to create some, um, I guess I can just kind of, you were wanting to know more kind of what I'm thinking, but I wanted to create some um, content that was, that used kind of what I'm learning in this process of uh, teaching myself to paint and make it applicable even if somebody's not a painter. Like if somebody's not a not an artist, how can I make the applicable? Um, and so I'm kind of playing around with that idea and that's the that's the intent of the content that I'm going to be putting putting out in the next hopefully gonna be able to do it weekly I need to get sharpen my game and video editing because I am not at all like I am sure I can learn it but I I have day job and everything else too so um, yeah that's the deal okay so I feel we're getting there so y'all can see, I've spent a lot of time laying this in. So let me hold this up to the, whoops, the camera. Whoa. I'm doing this backwards, so I'm trying to. So you can all see it's very rough, very basic, and uh, not detailed at all. But I feel like it's a good foundation for where we're going. So the last thing is the closest to, the closest to us. And so we want to try to uh, do some of this ground. So I'm going to take, not at all, not at all. I am absolutely a noob too. So I have no, I mean, I, anything I'm, I'm saying is just kind of by experience. I am uh, not at all a pro. Um, so I'm taking this. If you'll notice, down at the bottom is the most, uh, in. it's shadowed. And so what I want to do is take these colors we've been using, like this ultramarine blue, and I want to create kind of a muted, shadowed, murky greenish color. Um... And so I think that ultramarine blue will give it to me with the ochre and the bird umber kind of a, as a good, a good base color for this uh, closest area that is closest to the viewer. So... I love my babies. Yeah, absolutely. I do not have any fur babies, um, but my brother does. I just spent the holiday break with my brother and sister-in-law, and they have two pups, and uh, I love my fur nieces and nephew. 
niece and nephew, but, uh, or I guess they're both fur nephews, um, but I am not, I'm too selfish to have a, a child of my own, so I go and visit and enjoy them and then am glad when I can go home and not be woke up in the middle of the night to go out or if there's a thunderstorm or whatever because I know like if I got a, a pup of my own I would just be that'd be it my heart would be forever taken over just trying to get this uh, on the canvas now so pardon me for lifting it off the out of your view a little bit Okay, now I think we're good. So I'm back to the point I was at the beginning where the paint's drying faster than I can apply it. So I have, I bought some um, uh, blending gel that allows acrylics to blend and I, and I actually am liking, I just used it a little bit. I didn't use it tonight, but I've used it a little bit and I like what it does but um yeah but then i've gotten so used to working with acrylics very you know where they quickly dry and so then it's like oh it's not dry fast enough and so then i find myself artificially trying to to dry the the gel I put in to slow the dry. So it's kind of pointless. Okay. Just want to get this in here. I think we're getting there, ladies and gents. We are getting there. Yes, yes, yes. If I had thought ahead of time, I would have come up with something a little more interesting, maybe, um, for to put in the foreground, I might have adjusted that a little bit, but I didn't, so we'll just paint it as it is. Barely go out. Yeah, I, I basically, especially because I teach, I just am not willing to put my students at risk, so I don't go, I don't go out of my house. I mean, unless it's just, I live downtown um, off the river, so like I walked down to the river today you know, I'll go out, but not around people. Um, just not going to do it. Not going to do it. But I'm hoping that as a teacher, I'll be able to get a vaccine fairly quickly. That's the prayer, the hope, the goal. Okay. So we kind of have a baseline in now. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I want to put all of this shrubbery in or if I want to leave it out. So... It's watercolor, but the relationship to water is something of bygone era. Can't just add water. Yeah, the, um, obviously there is watercolor, you know, which is its own beast. I am impressed with the people that are watercolors. That's an amazing skill I don't have or don't have yet. But, um, yeah, acrylics are, we are, with acrylics, you're definitely trying to, um, slow the 
slow the uh, drying process because they, they dry really fast. Okay, I'm just going to, this might be too bright, but I don't know. It kind of feels like it's not, though. a little bit of a okay I've created kind of this warm blue gray to kind of take us because the grass obviously is actually green but in the in the shadows it's not gonna look that Okay, we'll see. All right. Yeah, I'm with you. No crowded places, especially in the last year. Someday. But by then, I'll be so used to just being on my own. I don't know that I'll ever. I was thinking about that. When I was thinking about this 80-20 rule, I was really thinking like, Hmm, because I'm one of those people that before this was out in the community, I, I live in a small town, so like Little Rock is everybody knows, well, you can get to know everybody, and like so I would go out to all the, you know, the after work mixers or the whatever's going on, and you, you see people, and it's very social. Plus, we generally have good weather, even in the harshest winter, so doesn't stick around too long and it's easy to get out and hang with people but nope 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 all right now what I think I'm gonna do if y'all will be so kind as to bear with me we have about 45 minutes so I'm gonna move this back a little bit um I am going to run and clear my water and I am gonna come right back so hang on even before this I hope I'm not an no I think that's called an introvert um, a narcissist you wouldn't even be aware of your narcissism so I think the fact that you could recognize I may be a narcissist means you aren't it just means you're an introvert perhaps so, all right, let me um, put up my GIF, and I'll be right back, y'all, about 20, 30 seconds. Et voilà.
like that. I am back. Clean water and half my head. All right. So let's do. Okay, so this is what we have, y'all. Um, a rough sketch in of what it kind of is going to look like. What do you think? We're the basic values, I think, are pretty good. The basic composition is pretty good. I kind of like it. So let us dive into about 45 minutes, see if we can get some detail done. That was fast. Yes, I don't have far to go to my water. Or this was fast. <laughs> the cute apron. Everybody loves my cute apron. Okay, so let if we're gonna do that, then let's do a little fashion show, y'all. So let me. Here you go. See, cute little apron. The only thing about this, I have to tie it around. It goes around, and I tie it in the front because um, it, it doesn't hold up. It doesn't stay up on my shoulders. So sometimes it'll slide off my shoulders. I'm not super broad shouldered either. So, but uh, yeah, there we go. Little mid session, uh, little mid session uh, fashion show. So, okay, let's see. Here we go. Let us do some detail. Now I am going to try to. Put this more. Hey, Max, see? You, you cook some pasta, have a little dinner and a drink, and you get entertainment for free. Oh. Uh, yes. I... Am definitely not a model, but you know, I'll play the game. Okay, let's dive in a little bit and start putting in some of these details. So, I think what I want to do is start working furthest away from the viewer forward. Um, that's just kind of how I roll. So, let's look at these details that are in the in the distance now out here is a little it's actually a little police station outlet because there's there's a trail that goes along the river here and i've actually walked from my house up to this little outpost but i don't think i'm going to put that little building in there i think i'm just going to put some undefined kind of the the sand uh kind of lines there to uh, indicate the the shore, to give us a definite shore in this division. Um, the little extras you get when you watch these gig, yeah. Yeah, well, you just better all hope that I don't start singing someday. All right, so let's, let's put in some of these details. I'm just basically being postponing because I'm not sure what I want to do but there's always a point in a painting where it's off the rails and you wonder if it's gonna be like if you're ever gonna get back on the rails and we haven't actually got there this time which makes me happy I feel like we're on the right track I'm just kind of organizing I have so many tubes of paint I really need to build an efficient paint center that's separate from my little paint station. Um, okay, I am going to just go in and I think I'm going to start by putting in some of these, the trees and the, um, the rock formations because those are kind of the the most visible parts of this. Cl 
Cliff or Butte or what's it called? Can't think of the word. It's not really a cliff, but it's a the rock face of the Rocky outcropping. Bring in those black paint for the dark shadows and then glaze color to make it look not flat. When you say the black color, are you talking about in the cliffs, the shadows in the cliffs? Good question. Um, I'm not sure. They will they will be in layers as far as the different colors, but they're not going to be super precise because, as you can tell in the in the photo, you can tell they're trees, but you can't see a lot of detail. The only detail you can really see is the tree that comes across the top. So the only trees you'll be able to see are the ones that pop up along the top of the ridge. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing them in layers as well. So, okay, I'm trying to figure out, I think I need a little more. Haha, <laughs> yes, I know that. I do too. Actually, there's black right there on my palette. I do, I mix black also. Like, I rarely use black for, like, or if I do it very little, but yes, I, I feel ya. Okay, I think I want to come in this right. I want to say it's right in about here. There's a Big cliff. Section. So now, um, as you all notice, uh, it's hard to see. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. You won't be able to see a lot of detail, um, but notice I'm putting in the cliff here, just the basic, um, this kind of yellow cliff in the in the that's shining off the where the sun is shining off of the cliff. I'm looking at my reference, but I'm also looking down to my um my um value reference photo that's black and white to really get a sense of where this should be different if that makes sense so um yeah i'm actually painting what i see in the on the reference Now, I brightened this up considerably to this. As you can tell, you can barely even see that. And this is super bright um, as a layer because it's I can always darken it down. But it's also where the sun is because the sun is coming more this direction. Um, and I just know that because I know this area and I know how the sun was setting. Um, but I want to put some of this color in the lighter spots 
and what you were whatever you were asking about if we were going to layer these trees it's the same with these rocks kind of layering in this the tones of this rock face and then we add we'll add all the we'll add all of the uh shadows as well or we'll enhance the shadows so that you really see and it's just layering it's being patient enough to layer all these layers in until it kind of emerges as you want it to emerge Okay, so I've mixed a kind of darker green color. You can't really see it. Maybe I can bring it up to the light. Uh, but I'm putting in some shadows around these light spots. At least the suggestions of shadows begin to define the rocks. I'm liking this kind of greenish color that's coming, so I'm going to actually jump over and do some of that work. For some reason, it blended really nicely. So we're going to start putting in the suggestions of these trees that are here.
what you had asked this question will the trees you paint now be final or are they done in layers so yes now you can start to see like i'm doing notice how i went in with the lighter green just to put in some definition and now i'm going in with a little bit of darker and starting to drop in some darker overlays or darker um, places. So this is where you begin to do suggestions of You are absolutely right. It is a challenge, but it's, it is fun. And that's the fun of this type of work to me because it's not terribly, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's not difficult necessarily. It's just having the patience to it's, it's, I've said this to people when they say, oh, you're so good, or oh, you're improving. I said, I appreciate that, but really all it is is problem solving with problem solving with color, perspective, value, composition. It's just recognizing, oh, that didn't do what I thought it would, or that isn't what I thought it was, or, and then figuring out, okay, now what next? What next? What's the next thing? That's the, that's the game. That's the game. Now as I go in here, I'm looking for, I'm watching my, um, reference photo that's black and white for my value changes here. And 
and trying to get the value change correct. Brilliant observation, brilliant observation. So what kind of, um, what are the languages you study or what, what is your area of language study? I'm very curious. Oh, cool. Wow. I imagine Thai is a fairly difficult language to master. Hey, Eric, thanks for stopping in. I hope you are doing well and weathering this pandemic okay. It's been a while since I've seen you. Well, at least a, over a year, of course. But hope you're staying safe. definitely created a pandemics definitely created a challenge for everybody
Approximately where the sand will be. Yes. Um, so what I'm doing is this is the darkest. I'm actually watching my off screen. I'm watching my black and white. Um, you can see there I have my black and white photo um, here. And so the darkest, I'm basically painting what I see here various shades of gray basically now obviously there's some blues and kind of dark greens but the sand is right in here this is actually it looks like sand but it's actually a concrete wall so that will lie in right here um kind of there where that uh line is starting to of now my it's kind of hard because my there maybe if i turn my camera a little bit it's a little more this is as close as i can get whoops sorry um to over my shoulder There. So yes, this is kind of where the sand will come in, right in here, because um, it's right kind of center of the photograph. But I wanted to lay in these other colors first. Because the sand will, could be the, not the easiest, but it's fairly easy because the light colors will stand out pretty quick. Thanks, Max. I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out for so long. Um, yeah, that should go live on Monday, and I'll make sure to hit it up on all my socials so you should see it. Um, and yeah, that's the plan, Stan. Have a good one, and we will catch you soon again, I'm sure, sir.
the vertical lines of light and dark are definitely longer. Yes. Because you notice these kind of the shadows come way out here and the tree itself is not very or kind of the the shadow it's actually a reflection a shadow reflection of the shadow it's not even a tree it looks like a tree on what I painted but yeah you're absolutely right and that's the thing I wasn't even looking at the reference photo I was looking at my black and white version so I was just painting the shadow not actually the structure of the thing so yeah it's absolutely true and Oh my gosh, y'all. I just realized we're under 10 minutes. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it, what? And I'll stop by your Twitch stream. Check out, once I get offline, I'll check out your, uh, and follow you on Twitch. I'm about to wrap this up, y'all, in the next 10 minutes. If you don't follow me on YouTube, you can do that. Um, also, Instagram, at Stephen, with a V, Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, E as in Edward, Rice, R-I-C-E, at Stephen E. Rice. And you can see... process paintings paintings in process as well as sometimes whatever i'm having for breakfast or lunch or dinner um and a variety of other things so feel free to check it out and connect with me there
still really undefined. We have a lot of detail work to do, especially up on the hill, but you're starting to see where it's coming together, I hope. So that's exciting. Little by little, we will get there. But I'm pretty pleased with where we are with just two up from just two hours of. Oops, that's really dark, isn't it? Good night, Lola. Thanks for staying up so late. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Always appreciate you. Looking forward to checking out the work you did on Tank. Thanks for sharing his light and life with us through art. Such a special thing.
All right, y'all. I think I'm going to do this. Okay. So this is where we are. Whoop, whoop. I need to come over here. This is where we are with the painting right now. Let me zoom it in a little bit. Obviously still have quite a bit of detail work and I need to color correct some of the uh, balance. It's more, there's a lot of red tones, but red is a really vibrant color. And so it's gonna be a fairly easy one to add because it's gonna pop out very quickly with very little effort. But I'm happy with where we are right now. Um, I, yeah, I think I'm, I'm happy with where it is right now. Once we get all these colors in, the reds up here detailed in and some of them down in here, reds and oranges, yellows, um, then we'll come in very fine with fine strokes and put in the blue ripples across the edge of the water and, um, and then the darker strokes on the ripples here and of course the brush right there. But I am happy with where this is. Uh, we got a lot accomplished in an hour and 30, 40 minutes. Um, appreciate everybody who stopped by, especially those of you who are first timers. It was great having you on the stream and I hope you'll join again another time. Like I said, Monday uh, on YouTube will be uh, new short form content if you're interested in that. It's gonna be a little more mindset and process, what's going through my mind, what I'm learning from this process as opposed to actual technical painting um, or observing painting. Um, I'll also be posting, um, yeah, Monday, that will go there. And oh, the live streams, like I said, I think out till April, but definitely into the spring are scheduled on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, uh, find my channel. If you're not already there, you can subscribe and then set the notifications to turn on so that you'll be notified um, when I go live. Otherwise, it is great having you all on the, on, the, uh, on the stream tonight. Again, thanks so much for spending your evening with me, and I've had a blast, and I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you next week, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, same place, same bat channel. Have a great evening, and have a great rest of your weekend.